You know, I love steam, but this engine sometimes... Alright, fine. Be that way. I'll work on you later. Talking to yourself again, eh, Neil? No. 30's just being stubborn again. This cross compound was stalling out the last time we ran her. She's got it out for you, doesn't she? Well, she better stop or she'll find herself as part of a couple of nice new Toyotas soon. Don't let Twyla hear you saying that kind of thing. She just can throw you under 30's wheels with that kind of comment. I don't know who this Twilly is, but 30's got to be running for her to do that. Speaking of her last run, how do we do financial-wise? Not while I've heard. Just barely enough to justify firing up an engine this big. If it was my choice, I'd be working on 1904, which would be just right for the amount of people we're pulling compared to this thing. But it's not your choice. I was worried about that, though, when I saw we were barely running a full train, though. We haven't had a great turnout since last year's pumpkin train. Dale with Thomas was okay, but... But, that licensing is getting expensive. And between you and me, I hate that event. Brings in money, sure, but working outside in the intense summer heat with screaming kids and angry soccer moms... Just... no. If you ask me, we need another draw to get the younger generation involved that doesn't involve that blue shoving platform. Thomas worked when I was a kid because between the books and what the show used to be, it showed how cool a railroad was. My cousin watches the current version, and it's... yikes. I see where you're coming from. We need more youngins in this hobby in general, but... It isn't as popular a hobby as it used to be, at least in this country. I'm not saying I want railroading to have the appeal of baseball, but there's gotta be something to get that spark back. You could throw the 77 into Notch 8. She'll give you those sparks you're looking for. <sighs> Ma'am, shouldn't you be at home cooking? I always ring my lunch when I'm on duty. Why? 30's not booked for service until next weekend. Shakedown run. Why do you think we've been raising steam in her? Oh yeah, huh? I guess I'd better get back to tightening those loose bits to keep that piece of beautiful cross compound to stay in balance. If this works well, I might as well just use it on 1255. Sure. Just remember, if you do implement whatever your fix is for 1255, remember that the piston works best with 30 to 75 thousandths of an inch for the slip between the piston and board to pump air. That is, as long as the piston is straight or none of the other moving parts have seized up after sitting for so long. Worst case scenario though, like if everything is seized up after so many years of being reboard to stock oversize, at best I'm sure that one supplier in Pennsylvania would be happy to sell you a replacement 9.5 inch single stage version for between eight or $15,000. See if the compressor is made too tight. Stock oversize? It means that the cylinders of the air pump are reboard so that the pistons can still pump air for the brakes. But those words came out of a girl. Are you gonna ask her about the difference between lifting and non-lifting injectors? <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> so Twyla, mind if I ask something that might come across as personal? I'm listening. Well, since you're one of us young guns, and also female, what makes railroading interesting to you? Well, everyone's answer is because it's our history. But for many of us who were born too late to see these things running everywhere, it's a little more than that. Sure, it'd be cool to know what 30 did in her service career, or who ran her, but I wonder more about the people 30 may have helped in her career. Like the farmer who needed to get his produce to the market, or maybe the soldiers heading off to war. Or maybe a long lost flame coming back to meet the man of her dreams. There's more to trains than just the history. You just have to look deep enough. We should put it in our brochure. More than just history. There's a lot of passion in these things too. People loving these machines as much as their own families. <laughs> it's a rough job to be in and I'm sure as you know. Not everyone gets along with each other that well. <coughs> but something that stuck with me in my human psychology studies is how to achieve what's called mindfulness. 
where we focus on the present moment while calmly acknowledging our thoughts, actions, and feelings. I didn't grow up memorizing names on freight cars or shop buildings, but among my other methods for achieving mindfulness, I've always thought the sound of the whistle was very... soothing. Not to mention the whole lore of, where's that train going? Who or what is it carrying? I wonder if I can ride that train someday. It's a very people-oriented business. Machines are only half the story with these things. Uh, the cross compound works now. I got it to be at 40 thousandths. Oh good. Just show Alvin where the fix is and how you did it. Thank you, um... Neil. Yeah, and uh, thanks for putting a few things into perspective too. So you guys are just going over to Merriman and back, right? Yep. Running light with just a caboose. Men doing some load tests there with some covered hoppers provided by the belt line. Mind if I ride there with you guys? Um, aren't you already signed up to work in the depot today? If this test goes alright, there'll be plenty more opportunities to come ride. We're rather accommodating with guests. Alright. Well, if your crew's coming on duty, I should probably get going. But I'd love to talk with you more about what makes trains interesting to outsiders. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I know some bloggers who would be very impressed with your knowledge base. <laughs> yeah, sure. An attractive woman who's six years older than me and working in human science is totally deserving of someone who's into rallycross and drawing cartoons for fun. Well, too bad to be them. Because no job is ever interesting. Until you take an interest. Good way of looking at it. Well, have fun with her. <laughs>